So you'd think you'd probably have to spend a lot of time going through mazes and searching this place from top to bottom for really obscure clues, but actually you don't. It's really just a series of three fairly simple mini-games. Um, the first one in the series is this tabletop minigame, and all it is is you're just playing with a series of five switches, and eventually you'll guess the right combination, have a good ball movement, and when that's done, the little drawer opens up and you get a vacuum tube. Uh, you finish all three puzzles, you get three vacuum tubes, you put them into a computer, and you open up this guy's website, and then you can explore it. And actually, that's kind of a left town way. The second puzzle is upstairs, and along the way you run into this very obvious clue. You basically run headfirst into it. And the key there, of course, is the patent number. Um, so you write that down, you double it, and like the, right in the next room you find this cash register. And all you have to do is replicate the patent number that you doubled on the cash register with the coins. It, if you play around with it for any amount of time, you'll figure it out almost immediately. This one's really not that hard. I'd just like to know how anyone could possibly fail to notice these puzzles. I mean, in many cases, they take up the entire center or several parts of the room with, like, really elaborate shrines and castles that have been set up. Uh, anyway, I the see third these puzzle... old guys don't get around Sorry, the third things. puzzle has to do, of course, with this broken clock, and it's back downstairs. And you go back there and you see this really peculiar and obviously a puzzle setup of three different clocks. And uh, if you think about it for a little bit, especially considering there's a time zone chart on the other wall, you basically have to convert that time on the broken clock into the three various time zones depicted on these clocks. So the time zone in Egypt, the time zone in, like, Germany or Holland or whatever, and the third one is the U.S. Actually, the hardest part of all these puzzles for me was just finding where in the hell to plug all these vacuum tubes in. It, it's not immediately obvious where these things go. And actually, I was a little surprised that uh, this computer is right next to Burgess Meredith, and I never knew that. I was looking around all the other rooms. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. Oh, fascinating, Captain. So once you plug his antique vacuum tubes into the computer, you can now access his website, so you go to his mainframe and access the Matrix once again. Although, I think the first site I run into is actually, uh, Catherine's website. Catherine's yeah, what? so I, uh, I think I go into that first, and I try to guess the password there. But what could the password possibly be? If only she'd rigged some elaborate laser crystal trap in her room, and... Or she could have, like, I, I don't know, just mailed it to me. But yeah, the password's horoscope, like the laser trap tells you. <laughs> He was once a little green slab of clay. Da -da 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 Gumby. Da -da -da. Ah! I am Benson Magnata of the New York City Allied Police Forces Soho Corps. Holy shit, it's Cyberwalking! Get in the car! You must leave the area immediately. This will be your only warning. Christopher Walken is the lawnmower man. So yeah, um, I bet you didn't expect this, but there are a fair number of first-person rail shooter segments in Ripper. And this is one of them, and actually these can be quite hard if you don't know what you're doing, so you definitely need to read the instructions before starting this game out, or you will just get dominated. The first key to this is shoot the giant glowing fuck me lights, which are, of course, shooting spotlights out of Cyberwalkin's ass. Um, as long as you focus on that, you should be okay. The other thing you need to know is that you have a shield. And I think that's used by the right mouse button. If you don't know that, Walken will just shoot the shit out of you and, like, ram you with his ass. Oh no, I've been pwned! Hasta la vista, baby. He's made of liquid metal. Can make knives and stabbing weapons. He can walk into a dead book with his tiny top pokey too! Quinlan, run! It's one of those monkey balls that Jimmy Walker warned us about! Meanwhile, on Namek, Piccolo had secured another Dragon Ball. Catherine's notes on the Ripper case. My most important clue to learning what happened to her. Is that a Quentin model whack you've got there? It's not mine, it's my girlfriend's. I've been grepping for one of these for months. These are tough to find if you're not in the professions. What are you, a lawyer? Reporter for the Herald. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Low end of the pay scale, eh? Tell me about it. You should work for yourself. There are thousands of ways to make money in the net, believe me, I know. For instance, I'm a male prostitute on Craigslist. Hey, that reminds me, are you Trevor? I'm supposed to meet him here. Wow, business is booming. Do you know Joey Falconetti? Joey Falconetti. 
I haven't done business with that scoundrel in years. Talk about profiteering and a net. But do you know him? Eddie and I owned part of an emoticon franchise. An emoticon franchise? What, you sold smileys? This was years ago. Legitimate business, you see, but... Things got weird. Eddie's a thief by nature. Robbed it blind. We had to sell out to some Palestinians in New Dallas. I haven't worked with Eddie since, but I, I keep an eye on him so he doesn't pilfer any of my holdings. I, I'm sorry, I stopped paying attention. You did what with the Palestinians? Do you know where I can find Falcon Eddie? You don't. Did you try Google? The Falcon usually finds you and takes your money. Well, lucky for me, I'm broke. A grave digger named Farley at the Medicon told me that you might be a link to find him. What's your interest? You have to kill him? Well, it's not killing I had in mind. Huh. Well, somebody's gonna whack that bird one of these days. Eddie's consciousness is inside a few hundred terabytes of well space with his body safely hidden. I set Metacog up with a guy named Twig. Uh, lives out in Hoboken. He seems to always know where Eddie's at. The horror! Eddie usually presents himself with video. He likes to show off. Hoboken. Hmm, save my girlfriend or go to Jersey. Girlfriend Jersey. Sorry, cat. Mr. Nelson, what's your background with cyberspace? <sighs> Got some time? Well, that would take a while. No! I've been decking with the global net since it went online. Present at the creation. Well, me and Al Gore invented it. That's why thugs like Falconetti disappoint me. Damn waste of talent. Well, how about a butterbeer? Ah! Watch yourself with Falconetti, kid. He's a genuine bird. Too of close, night. too close! Ugh, the real world looks faker than the virtual world. You can read your copy, Quinlan. You might nail this freak before the police do. Just asking questions, seeing where the answers take me. Everyone, drinks are on me! Kinda slow in here. Yeah, the Rippers really put a damper on anonymous sex these days. Oh yeah, I'm sure anonymous sex is the number one reason people come to the Café du Champ. What do you know about Gambit Nelson? Isn't he one of the X-Men throws exploding playing cards? Gambit's been coming in here for years. Ah, Shazam! Now I have a cigarette! The man has seen it all. He can remember when the net went online. Back when there weren't any wells. Cyberspace was nothing but a bunch of isolated BBSs. Must be a first-generation Decker. He was one of the first sea space entrepreneurs. He made a killing in the net. All of its league. Hamster dance? That was him. It's weird, huh? You know, a good guy wins for once in a blue fucking moon. This bartender's really hostile. I guess it's because it's the year 2040 and Brett Favre just unretired for the 37th time. Got a beer. Yeah, sure thing. And all I got is piss warm jungle, man. Why don't you try this one? It's called Viper Pill. Micro brewed by Cobra Commander. Goes down real smooth. It's got some bite. <laughs> Great bartender in the glass. On the house. Just nail the ripper so that my customers can get drunk in public again, huh? Okay. Cheers. It's a good thing I didn't ask for a blender drink. Circus Maximus. What? Oh, I know. He's doing the motion capture for Wii Extreme Canoeing. Show me your awesome moves. I, 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 I'm your little butter. You must be Jake Quinlan looking for the Falcon. How do you know who I am? Gambit called ahead. It's the Bear Jew. That's strange. Burton usually sends Dr. Cable whenever she's in trouble. Oh, news travels fast. I guess. If Keanu Reeves and Tony Danza had a child. Tell me, Twig. Is Eddie as good as his rep? Best I've ever seen, and uh, I'm no amateur. He can deck for days straight and keep sharp. No paranoia, no mental fatigue, no loss of rationality. Of course, it doesn't hurt to have someone like me, uh, Monitoring cooking for him. Cooking? Well, I make nachos. You keep him drugged? Hey, even an archangel like, uh, the Falcon needs medication. Extended decking? Very hard on the dendrites, man. And the, uh, took us. Lots of sitting. I could imagine. He can play World of Warcraft for days on end. Where's Falcon Eddie? 
Not a simple question. He's usually in two places at once. Quinlan feels hair envy for the first time. Tell Burton and Cable they gotta beg in person for Eddie's aid. Hmm? This guy is needlessly cryptic. Look, just tell me where one of them is so I can go kick him in the balls. Don't play games with me, circuit head. Lives are at stake. See, I don't have time to trade one-liners with a goddamn glorified houseboy. You don't give me Falcon Eddie in five seconds. I'm gonna email your address to Detective Magnata, and you won't be dancing with any shadows in a maximum security prison. This guy sorta of looks like Pa. Don't blow your motherboard, cause Burton's getting lazy. That's her problem. What are you doing? You're completely harsh in my mellow, man. Falcon is playing in one of his wells. The address is Circus Maximus. Oh, the address is Circus Maximus. I'd suggest trying a different approach with him if you're planning on cooperation. Thanks. You've been a big help. My pleasure. The FBI's gonna pay me to surf? What's with the shadow? Like him? No. He's a movement model for a sea space doppelganger. I'm He's a movement model for a sea space doppelganger. He's a true multitasking capability. This is just practice, of course. The real thing will be in cyberspace. Threw my shoulder out, beating a Nazi to death with a baseball bat. Ugh. Sensors itch. Okay, time to track down this Falcon Eddie clown. Falcon Eddie Circus. And judging from what Twig told me, the password is Circus Maximus. Let's type that in there. Warriors, come out to play! <laughs> Falcon Eddie? Well, I think you got him. What the fuck is going on here? It's a 40 gigabyte virtual environment. <laughs> Made it myself. Pretty impressive, huh? Oh, this isn't at all suspicious, no. Think of it like a game room. And you're my favorite toy. <laughs> oh, right there, he just wet him. You're called the Answer Doll. And the idea is, I throw a knife, and you answer a question. Who? The fuck? Send you! This is a computer simulation. His knives are incredibly perilous. <laughs> oh no, no, this guy couldn't possibly be the Ripper. No, I just don't see it. You kiss my ass. You want to talk to me? You get me down from here. An ass kissing? But I'm having a good time. The order. Not a smart move for somebody in your position. You got bald, buddy. Ah, oh, my virtual nards, which are in no danger whatsoever. Wow, he just wet his pants twice. I didn't think he could do that. We eat the pig and together we burn! Come with me! You belong with me! Burn! This has nothing to do with you. I have a friend who was attacked by the Ripper. The Ripper? Someone who's almost as good with knives as I am. She needs your help. Before I help you, you gotta show me what you're worth in cyberspace. I'm gonna work with you, I gotta know you can handle yourself. What are you gonna do, give me a test? I'm gonna run you through cores, see how you shoot. If you shoot a bad guy, you get a point. If you shoot a good guy, you lose. You're weird. My score was pretty damn high. I have the power glove. Beat it and we'll talk. Oh, fuck. Fuck, I hate mini games. So this is another first person rail shooter segment and um not sure what to say about this one but it's actually deceptively hard because Falcon Eddie tells you to, you know, shoot the bad guys, not shoot the good guys, but he never really explains to you what the good guys look like. Um, they all look like skeletons in, in various states of menacing poses and dis, uh, decay and disarray. Um, the only real general rule I found was the bad guys tended to be shaded in red and the good guys kinda, you sorta, are shaded in green. And the bad guys tend to have bladed weapons. Like, right, that right there was a good guy. And, you know, I bet you couldn't tell that. They, they all have the same kind of look and glow. And if you shoot one, it's not necessarily over, but you're kind of bone. So you have to play through this quite a few times just to memorize where they all come from and, you know, which guys to avoid. That was a good guy right there. See, they all had the red glowing eyes. Good guy or bad guy, both. Doesn't matter. 
What really frustrated me about this level is that um, even if you hit all of the bad guys and miss all of the good guys, but you only shoot the bad guys one time, you still don't have enough points to finish the level. What I didn't know is you're actually expected to shoot the bad guys multiple times to rack up more points, and I don't know why I didn't do that, but I just assumed if you shot a bad guy, that was enough. Um, just one time. But clearly not. So I'd already played through this about a half a dozen times, just failing on points all the time. Is sometimes hitting a good guy. I mean, just, it was just really stupid mistakes. And then I hit every bad guy in the way. I felt like I'd done like a flawless playthrough on this, and I still missed out by like 200 points, which is like one hit. So I was like, ah! So um, it's really funny though. If you if you fail this, the Falconetti guy he screams at you in this really shrill, annoying voice. He goes, "Come on, go for the gold, baby!" <laughs> it was just really awkward when he screams at you like that. And so, but you know, after the sixth time you hear that, it's not nearly as amusing. Like that, I could never tell if that was a good guy or a bad guy because it was glowing green, and yet it was armed with a sword. <laughs> I, I never shot that one. And then you get hit by a train, and then you see your score. And as you can clearly see, I didn't hit any good guys, but I didn't shoot enough of the bad guys enough times to get the points. <laughs> In case you forgot, my score was higher. Come on! Go for the gold, Quinlan! You're a funny guy, Sully. I like you. That's why I'm going to kill you last. Hey, nice shooting cowboy. <clears throat> Reckon you can fly with the Falcon after all. How's about you and me back at the Hacienda? Oh, am I cool no, enough to fly, fly with the Falcon? Oh, goody. Because I've been to your house, and you weren't there. Well, just because you can't see me doesn't mean I'm not there. Talk to Twig. I don't wanna... He'll be expecting you. <laughs> Jesus, he's still at it! Row, row, row your boat! Play straight with me, Twig. I'm all played out. I want to see your boss in the flesh. Relax. He wired me on the Ethernet. He's on the other side of the door behind me. Once I open it, though, you're on your own. Ah, so he wired you on the Ethernet. Yeah, the Ethernet. You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. A secret look into Nintendo's playtesting lab. Christ! Like a fucking corpse. Eh, my parents have walked in on me doing weirder stuff. You had to come up for air. Hey, Twig, you lazy piece of shit! What kind of cheap ass new trophies you feed me? You barely keep up with the data transfer in there. What, Twig unreliable? No. I lost that fucking contest. Oh my god. All right, hot shot. What do you want? Yeah, this is the second game I've played that prominently featured a ceiling mounted leather body harness. I play some weird shit. There's this detective named Magnata working the case. Won't tell me much. You say Magnata? <laughs> Christ. He's worse than fucking criminals. Sounds like you know him. No, oh, um, I know him. I know I'd like to blow his fucking brains out. I heard that, Eddie. Well. Uh, this just doesn't work when I try to force it. Sorry. How did an outlaw like you hook up with a respected doctor like Burton? What he's really asking is, what in the hell is she doing with a creep who spends six days of the week hanging from the ceiling playing video games and wearing an adult diaper? As for years. <laughs> Does she? What's your take on the Ripper, Eddie? Can you imagine what he smells like? Holy shit, I just realized you're the one he writes to. He's the only reason to read the rags. Fucking guy's incredible. He gets in there, paints the room in blood like Jackson. Pollock on crack and gets out with other traits. And that's buzzing about this psycho. You sound like his number one fan. I can't get the guy out of my head. His stealth, his tools. I've been collecting knives for 30 years. I don't have a clue what kind of blade he's using. Well, could you use one of those knives to cut yourself down from that ridiculous thing? My friend and partner was attacked by the river. precious. You're going through all this for a woman, I assume you're doing her. Crazy shit for love, don't we? Yeah. I'm beginning to think so. What's with all these knives? Well, for one, I'd say they're sharp. I didn't mean that. You're missing the point. Ow. Oh, I see. I collect knives. And there's a serial killer loose. Knives equal killer. Ding 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 ding! I heard you reporter types were smart, but heck, you're way over my head here. 
I refuse to take sarcasm from a guy who's hanging by his underwear attached okay. to bungee cord. Look, Eddie, why don't you help me out with Catherine? Why should I risk my ass for you? I'll take you to White Castle. Oh, and as an added bonus, I'll go punch Twig in the scrote for free. Could get in on the Ripper case. Think of the endorsement deals. I'm interested in the Ripper, not your girlfriend. You can save a Ripper victim. I mean, think of the publicity. What do you want with publicity? I'm a fucking outlaw. Yeah, about that. What do you do that's illegal again? I honestly forgot. You could piss off your old enemy, Magnata. <sighs> Here's the deal. I've been in cyberspace for 80 hours. I gotta collect from two bookies, eat a big steak, cause I'm dying for some real food, and sweat these cheap ass nootropics out of my system. It'll take a couple hours. I'll meet you at the ICU later. Okay, I see you then. We'll see what the genius <laughs> can do about your babe. <laughs> Great. I'll see you there. Gosh, that always scares the crap out of me.